All right. So Crystal is going to be talking with us about the never ending story, how church tech can rebrand us. So take it away, Crystal. Thank you. And hello, everybody. I am, I, I have so many mixed feelings about being here with you today. Um, I'm both ecstatic and excited that um, this conference is happening, that we have a platform like this to talk about um, tech and what I will be sharing is kind of the evolution of tech and how it has kind of changed the, the church space um, and our stories as well. But also um, there's just so much going on in the world right now. Um, it started with uh, COVID and somewhere in there, there were murder bees. And, um, and now there are uh, protests and riots and just so much um, heavy, weighing heavy on the heart. And um, I'm, I changed my talk a little bit to incorporate um, some of that because uh, as you know, um, tech does an amazing job of, of kind of sculpting uh, the cultural space around us. Um, and so let me get started. Um, my name is Crystal Cheatham and I'm the creator of our Bible app. Thank you so much, Sarah, for that. Um, this is, and actually I wanted to show you briefly just what the app actually looks like. If you can see that, you can just scroll and kind of take in a bunch of different devotionals, Bibles and things. Um, and I believe that this is a resource that is supporting the change that we see in the church. Um, so during this talk, um, in light of the protests and the craziness going on, I told you that I changed a little bit of, uh, of, the, um, of the presentation today, um, but I want to, uh, include things we can do to address the rage and hopelessness we, we may be feeling right now. Um, I'm also going to give away two free subscriptions to the app and uh, you can win those just by per participating and, and being a part of this never ending story. Um, a little bit more about me. I am an out lesbian and um, my relationship to church changed exponentially when uh, I finally did come out to myself and my family and my community. Um, and the way that I engaged with my community um, continued to evolve with the way that I use tech. Um, I grew up as a Seventh-day Adventist um, and now I attend a UCC in Philadelphia. So um, the way that I believe all of us view faith is constantly moving and growing and changing. And I believe that that's a beautiful thing. Um, a little bit about our Bible app. Um, I created it in, uh, or I started to do the work to create our Bible app in 2017. That was fundraising and uh, reaching out to the community. Some of whom I've seen in the chat, the chat area. Hi, Jim. <laughs> Jim Keith. Um, and um, then I started to uh, to actually build it. And um, I myself am, am not a coder. I went out of my way to figure out who could help me code this, this thing that I had in my head that I couldn't quite you know, uh, transform uh, it into a real thing. Um, and luckily for me, uh, I had a really cool uh, small team step up and help me do this. And um, we launched in 2018. And uh, at the time, we, did, we really didn't have so many people on the app. Um, but uh, the cool thing about um, tech is that it doesn't really have to be super flashy. Uh, it just has to survive long enough. Um, and the surviving is a lot like uh, my journey in faith in that it constantly has to change and adapt to the, pay, to the way people want to use it. Not the way you envision they use it, but the way people want to use it. Um, and so right now we have uh, 24,000 people. Wait, are you, are you guys asking me questions? Right now we have about 24,000 uh, people who use the app for daily devotionals, uh, to read the Bible. We have multiple Bible translations or just for the chat space. And um, right now we have 300 plus uh, daily devotionals written by authors, um, majority of which who are in the US, but honestly from people across the world. Um, and uh, some of the topics, I mean, just look at the shelves. They range from race in America um, to, for, uh, to an entire shelf for LGBT inclusion, um, some, uh, a shelf about women's issues, and we're just constantly trying to cover things that don't get covered in mainstream. Um, we also have a large podcast library uh, where you can find podcasts that matter to our users. Um, and so we publish content, like I said, that is 
pro-women, that is inclusive of interfaiths, that is LGBT inclusive, and we try to represent everyone, not just the average person. Um, and if you have any questions, just type them in the chat and, and I'll try to get to them as we go along or at the end. Um, it, either way works for me. So um, I'm right now I'm curious about what what are some technologies your church has retired? That's an interesting question, isn't it? Um, I grew up singing and my favorite part of worship was always the music. So I'm going to use that as a, as a demonstration as I talk right now. Um, we, we retired our radio station, right? Because now there's podcasts. So why would you have to, to use the radio station? Paper bulletins. That is amazing. How did you pull that off? Um, increasing the creed. Overhead projector. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm not sure what church was like when you were a kid, but um, if you walk into any evangelical space now, you can expect to find big screens and video projection and worship bands with like wireless mics and the list goes on. I mean, you can even text your tithe to the church. Um, and I think somehow, somewhere along the way, we just accepted that people would have their own phones out in church and we just like, you know, used it to our advantage. So um, this is so different from the two cord, the two corded mics that we had in my church in Westchester um, that remained on stage at all time. You couldn't walk around with them. We had the, the overhead projector where um, if you wanted to uh, sing along with, uh, with music that wasn't in the songbook, um, you had to print the music, the, the lyrics on these like see-through plastic paper things that the, uh, uh, that the words, they were printed on. And if you had to make a correction, you use like this erasable marker to scribble it out and then rewrite the word in. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know what the thing is called anymore. You said overhead projection, but maybe that refers to a couple different things. Um, but um, it was the kind of tech that was encumbering to the user experience to the point where we were so thankful to reach for a hymnal or a songbook when we had the chance. Um, and then soon after that, we had, a, we had PowerPoint, um, which came with its own issues. Um, and if you knew how to do PowerPoint, you were like a genius back then. Um, and then, you know, it took tech elves to play an entire video for church. You know what I mean? Like, if you had access to YouTube at the time and you could get it to actually play, it was just like, it was crazy. Um, and eventually we, gradu we graduated to the screens and the lights and the jam bands um, and it is, it is marvelous. And I think what is so interesting to me is how much this, these, these technologies have grown because of the need in the church space, but also the way we do church has changed uh, because of these technologies being being introduced. And um, these changes focus on two things, the user experience, which is the tech func functionality in a way that encourages folks to, to use it, or, you know, the user experience could be that the, that, the, that the technology is too cumbersome and hard to navigate so that we don't want to use it. Um, and the other thing is church culture. Um, how are we engaging with each other in this space how is the tech allowing us to engage with each other in this space? Um, yeah. Um, so tech has changed the way we do worship. Maybe even the way we show reverence and respect for holy spaces. Like right now, pulling out a phone and watching a video during a worship is, 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 is like, it happens all the time. Um, but there was a time where having a phone in church would be considered so irreverent. Um, and right now I do church from my home, just as we all do because of COVID. So um, you can go to church anywhere around the world, just plug into Zoom like we all, here, we all are here now. Um, actually Sunday mornings, uh, we, we have started to do, we pass the peace uh, through Zoom. We take Eucharist through Zoom. And I'm really curious about your, about your stories with like Palm Sunday and Easter. How creative did your church have to get to make that happen for everybody? <laughs> I really wanna know. Um, I think it was in 2009 when I first took 
um, my family iPad to church in order to read and follow along with the Bible. Um, it was a simple thing, but I was starting to change the way that I engaged with my church space. Um, having a Bible app also opened that third door and changed the culture of the church. So user experience and church culture. I wasn't engaging with this. And what was interesting for me was that once I had a Bible app, it also opened up spaces that I hadn't been able to engage with from my pew. So all of a sudden, because of daily devotionals and readings that, that were filtering through that app space, all of a sudden I was engaging with other people's church cultures. Things that were happening in their churches suddenly became relevant to my experience. Um, and, you know, suddenly I was able to have multiple Bible translations um, and daily devotionals and things that were all accessible at my fingertips and that just like blew my mind. Um, but anybody who just downloaded our Bible app knows that I am, um, I am, I do not like YouVersion's Bible app. And I mean, that's just for very many reasons. A lot of them have to do with my personal politics, my faith politics. Um, but um, one of the first Bible apps that I, that I downloaded was YouVersion's Holy Bible app. Um, and what I discovered by reading that was this was one church's way of understanding the Bible, but it didn't include many experiences. Um, it didn't include my experience or my home church's experience. Um, and if I kept reading that app, my church experience and culture would have been lost forever. Um, and here is where tech can help us. Um, when we are engaging with each other across the world, does it ever make you feel like your church experience, that intimate space that you have when you walk into your church at home is going to change or is being disrupted? Um, I think that right now, I care a lot about the narratives that we have and preserving our, our uh, church culture. Um, and so I want to lead us through a, uh, a bit of a, uh, a fun, uh, I wanna say, uh, we're, we're gonna do some writing, okay? And I really want you to participate because this is the best way that uh, you can win one of those free subscriptions to the app. Um, Dun, 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 dun. So this whole thing that I've been doing with the, with the, uh, the never ending story is trying to preserve our stories, our culture um, in a way that, uh, that uplifts the personal story. And um, I believe that, I believe the thing that encapsulates how we do church, our beliefs, our beliefs systems and church culture are our stories. Um, now that church has become global, how do we find ways to keep our small town culture? Today, we're going to do an exercise together that will allow us to preserve the way we experience church. Let's tell our stories. I believe we should tell our stories, otherwise they get drowned out. Someone else's story is louder. Someone else's story is more important. All of a sudden, we've lost a bit of our, of our culture. I liked, I'd like you to write a brief devotional, yes, right here and right now. Um, it's going to be really easy. I'm going to copy and paste some instructions or examples into the, the chat space. And um, I was hoping that what is a devotional? It is a worshipful read, I guess, a meditative read, said the Quaker. I got you. <laughs> um, it's a way of, of kind of opening your spirit and relaxing. And let me give you, I'm going to share a link to um, a devotional that I was going to share a little later. Um, but as you can see, a devotional has three parts. It has a, uh, at the beginning, it has a verse or a, um, or a quote that uh, kind of sets your mind and your mood. And then it moves into an anecdote or story, um, some kind of instruction that moves you to the point um, and then finally, a, uh, a meditation or a prayer in the end or a call to action. And we're going to do all of those um, in the hopes that we'll be able to kind of put that into uh, an, an ongoing de devotional um, and I'll publish it into the app and it's just going to be so freaking amazing. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, starting off. Is everybody ready? I can't see you. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. 
Um, think of a story that encapsulates the culture of your church. Let it be one line of a story that reminds you why you go to church, why you go to the church you attend, who, who is there, um, what you feel when you walk in and what you feel when you leave. And uh, maybe there are several lines that come to mind now and just jot them down um, and we'll call that the anecdote. Um, I actually am going to incorporate, I mean, this is where I kind of changed everything because what's going on in my heart right now isn't reflective so much about my church, more so the political unrest that's going on outside. So um, I've decided to write something about the protests, the unrest, the violence. Um, you too can write about um, the cure you see or an event that happened to you during uh, this, this time of Black Lives Matter and um, writing and you know, all kinds of things. Um, and I'm gonna ask that you write this on your own and then when prompted, um, enter it into the chat space. Um, so my anecdote was, last night I watched a peaceful protest roll through the streets of North Philly where I live. I looked around at my mother, my brother, and his partner, wondering if I should be out there with them. Um, but in, and maybe I should have written this better, but I'm saying that I was inside yesterday with my family, wondering if I should be outside with the protesters. Um, but in that space, I felt whole. I felt useful sharing their light, being a family together. I thank God for my blessings, for my Black brothers and their safety. I stayed inside, close to the people who reminded me most of God. Um, and then we're going to move on to the verse, which does start off at the very top of the devotional, but uh, it, also, it always helps to kind of meditate on what you're going to write before you add the verse. And the verse I wanted to include was uh, Matthew 18, 20, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. And uh, finally, what is a prayerful action you can do to remember your church culture? Or for me, you know, um, what can I do to remember and work towards peace? Um, we call this the call to action. And uh, I wrote this, pray this prayer with me, dear God, help us to spend today's breaths fighting for those who can no longer breathe due to police violence and institutionalized racism. Um, give me one second. I'm just gonna paste these into the chat here for you. That's my verse. And Crystal, can yeah. people follow up with you afterwards? As Absolutely. Well? Okay. I think some people, okay, not everyone was prepared to write a devotional this morning. Yeah. Um, so, so you can, uh, so I'll drop your email into the yeah. chat. So yes. People can send it to you afterwards as well. That sounds good. That sounds good. Um, if you want to be a part of this, I would love you to send me uh, your, your full devotionals when all of this is over. I know it's really hard to write something meaningful in two minutes, um, but I just wanted to give you the space to do that. So I'm going to play a little music. I'm going to give up two minutes of my time so that you can have some time to, to, uh, to write. Um, and then when we come back, I'm going to ask someone to paste all three of their all three of their pieces together all at once so that I can read it. Um, I can read it to everybody. And I'm going to try and be as organized as I can um, in doing this, but just to show how easy it is for us to encapsulate our culture and find a way for tech to actually uh, to broadcast it and use it for our, our betterment. And so we're going to be publishing those to the app if you'll let me. Um, and you'll be able to log in at any time. It'll be on the free shelf and, uh, and share your devotional with somebody uh, next to you or see the things that people have written. I'm actually gonna do pieces of this, of this workshop um, the entire summer. And so you will be able to see how this never ending story uh, actually grows. Um, so I'm gonna play some music and I'm just gonna give you two minutes, uh, two minutes to write. Let me find Apple, there we go. Can you guys hear this? No? No. Trash. Okay. That's okay. Um, so down below, share screen. Can you hear it now? No. Okay. Share screen. Let's do that. One second. Okay. It went away. 
Oh, did I did I try to share it? Share screen. want to give you the one minute warning about halfway through. over um i'm wondering um if you had time to kind of process everything and um put words to paper um who else has been able to write just a brief uh devotional for us um sarah maybe you can help me find one find one to read yeah. um, aloud. I can absolutely do that. You guys did so well. I'm really Jill, like, I'm, I'm amazed how many people are able to write that quickly. <laughs> um, Jill says, um, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God from Philippians. Oh. We have no riots in our small town, but we do have some very peaceful protests on the courthouse lawn. Our congregation is very diverse politically. Our interim priest was awake all night Monday night and awoke to the leading of the spirit that our answer is to simply open the doors of our church for private prayer. Lift up your heart and voice in prayer in these turbulent times. Pray because prayer makes a difference. Pray because prayer changes us because prayer opens us up to the will of God. Oh, thank you so much, Jill. Thank you for sharing that. That was beautiful. Um, would you like read. one Yeah, I would, leave, I would like one more. That was so good. <laughs> um, all right, I'm gonna find, uh, there was a good one. So let's do one from Fran Gardner-Smith. Okay. On the last Sunday before we stopped worshiping in person, I walked into our gathering space before worship. While generally I like some peaceful quiet before worship, what I heard and what was caught up in was a buzz of 15 different conversations all happening at once. What I saw was all of those people delighting in being together and loving one another. From 1 John, beloved, let us love one another because love is from God everyone who is love is born of God and knows God. During this time of social distancing, it is so important to remember that while we can't be together physically, that doesn't change our love for one another. Loving God, I give thanks for the love that surrounds and defines our community. Amen, amen. How do you feel after that, Sarah? 
I'm uh, I'm getting all misty. I'm getting verklempt. Um, oh, verklempt. Uh, That's a good word. <laughs> to have um, to have that such quick processing be so grounded in our souls um, is um, is I think what I think we've been missing. I think yes. we've been missing that um, at our 24 hours news cycle, as Keith was talking about, um, and just the exhaustion um, hasn't given way to a, a grounding. Exactly. Um, and so I think this is a really good demonstration of how we can use story to, uh, to kind of hold on to our, our church culture. And um, as you'll see when I get the chance to publish all of these, um, the way that tech can, with a good user experience, can allow us to um, maintain that, maintain our culture and that spirit. Um, and so I'm going to ask everybody who participated to please email me your, uh, your devotional. Send it as it is. And if you want to also include your, um, a brief bio, just like one or two lines of who you are with, um, with your name, I will uh, be publishing these within the next week. Um, and you'll see this kind of grow throughout, throughout the entire summer. Um, but this has a timestamp on it, which shows that this was actually written during this momentous, momentous time. And that we across the world, we across America were able to, to, uh, to worship together. Um, mm -hmm. I freaking love it. I love it so much. Um, Thank okay. you for the <laughs> additional worship, Crystal. Um, mm -hmm. It was very powerful. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> Were there any questions? Um, I've also shared my, um, my Instagram and Twitter along with our Bible apps. If you want to keep engaged with us, um, we're doing a lot of work right now too. So. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.